Okay, let's take a look at another example of a nonlinear system. And uh, this one's going to look a little bit weird. So let me just kind of talk through it together a little bit. Let's kind of do a little thing together. So here we go. Uh, the first one is, the first equation is y equals x squared plus 8x plus 19. And the second one is kind of weird looking. Look at that. 2x minus y equals negative 10. Kind of a weird looking thing. Now you could solve this by substitution if you want. You can, I guess, plug all that stuff in for the y if you want. Let me show you a different way, which is called elimination. This is where I try to actually eliminate one of these unknowns. And you'll notice that if you line up the equal signs, you can kind of check out what's going on here. So I'm going to rewrite this exact same thing. No difference at all. I promise. Trust me. Do you trust me? I'm just writing this thing out in my own handwriting. But I'm going to line up the equal signs. That's the goal. So there's the equal sign. So there's the negative 10. Now, by the way, I, I don't know about you, but I like to write things lined up under the kind of the, the corresponding term. This is a constant. That's a constant. And then here, this is a minus y. And then there's a 2x in front. Now, when I write it this way, it's kind of cool because you see that what I can do is I can actually eliminate the y by just adding these two equations to each other. If I add these two equations, notice that the y minus y drop out, give me 0. And I'll just have x's. And so that's a cool way of solving this system by eliminating. So I just add. And so here I see 2x, that's 0, equals. And then everything else is just nice and happy. Happy. And now here, 19 minus 10 is 9. OK, it's a quadratic. Hey, everybody, come to my house. Come to my house. Quick, quick, big party. All right, so let's subtract the, the 2x on both sides. And again, notice how I write it. I immediately just do this, by the way. It's a great habit to get into. Just immediately write it where it belongs. A lot of people would write it here, maybe under the x squared, and they get totally weird, crazy answers. I just like to line them up, and then there's no problem. 0 equals, this is x squared, and then 8 minus 2 is 6, x plus 9. And now my hope, oh please, let's hope that this factors nicely. So I'm going to try to factor it right now live. You know how I like to think about factoring. You just kind of feel the factor. I see a positive sign here. They're both going to be the same sign, and that sign's going to be positive. I need two numbers whose product is 9, but they add up to give 6. Well, that's really great, because it's 3 and 3. Check it out. x times x, x squared. Middle inside term is 3x. Outside term is 3x. They add up to you 6x. 3 times 3 is 9. Love it. So you know the fundamental rule about when you have a product of things equaling 0, either one is 0 or the other is 0. In this case, in fact, notice they're the exact same equation. So it's going to kind of look a little bit weird. It, the first one is 0 when x equals negative 3. And the second one is 0 when x equals negative 3. So notice that I actually have the same solution twice. This is one of those examples where the line just grazes, just grazes the, the parabola. It's one of these examples where you know, there's just one point of intersection, right? They just romantically kiss. It's wonderful. It's very, very wholesome. So the question now is, where is the y value for that x solution? Well, again, what you can do is go back to either equation and solve for y. Let's just look at the, the linear one, since I always find the linear ones a little bit easier to solve. So now we're just going to solve a little bit for y here. So I'm going to let x equal negative 3. So I see negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 minus y equals negative 10. If I add 6 to both sides, then I see that negative y is equal to negative 4. If I either multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1, I see y equals 4. And so I see the answer is negative 3, y equals 4. I could write it as negative 3 comma 4. There's only one solution because they just touch at one point, which is really, really cool. OK, let's take a look at another one together just for fun. No, you love these things. Here's this system. y equals x squared plus x plus 2, and 3x minus 2y equals 1. Again, we could use the elimination method. And let me just talk through how I would do it. If you would lose, use the elimination method, I would multiply this top equation by 2. And then notice I'd have a 2y here. And when I'd add it to the bottom equation, the 2y and the minus 2y will cancel. There it is, in fact, you can see it. The point is that it's a quadratic again in x. Everyone come to my house. And so like magic, bling, I've done it in advance. And that's the equation we get. How awesome is that? So now it's time to solve. Now it's time to solve. OK. 
So what do you try? I mean, I'll put a 2x here and an x here. I want the product, so the product's got to have, these guys have to have the same sign. They're both negative, negative, negative. OK, product has to be 5, and they have to add to give negative 1. 5 and 1, that doesn't work. That gives me a negative 6. In fact, you know, it gives me like, you know what? This can't be factored. Oh, no. You know what we have to do? And this happens in life every once in a while. Not factorable. We've got to actually use the quadratic formula. OK, OK, everybody calm down. Quadratic formula, as you know, is x equals negative b plus or minus square to b squared. Uh, minus 4ac all over 2a. So here we go. x equals negative b. So b represents the coefficient on the x, which in this case is negative 1. So negative negative 1 is 1 plus or minus, because there are always two solutions to a quadratic, square root b squared, that's negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times ac. So that's 2 times 5 is 10, all over 2a, 2 times 2, which is 4. So this works out to be 1 plus or minus the square root of, and this is 1 minus 40, which is negative 39, all over 4. Now, remember that the thing inside under the, the, the square root, under that radical, is called the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant. And look what's happening. I have the square root of a negative number. The discriminant is negative. If the discriminant is negative, there are no real number solutions. So that was good that we couldn't factor it, because it turns out there are no solutions. So no solutions here at all, because the discriminant is negative. That's not a real number. So no solutions. This is one of those cases where the parabola lives some spot, and in fact, the, the line lives somewhere totally else. And they never actually touch. Graphically, they never intersect. And so what we're seeing here is that this has no solutions. So you could have a nonlinear system that has no solutions. And here, we've actually verified that for ourselves uh, using algebra. How cool.